thank you, Chaim and uh, Woody and Arik, and thank you for uh, for all the speakers here for this uh, very nice meeting for their enormous contribution to this uh, event. So I'd like to touch upon uh, what is the significance or what is the prevalence of procedural complications in TAVI versus surgical ABR. I have this uh, two disclo disclosures. So, so I'd like to speak about complication, as I said, uh, after TAVI uh, versus surgical AVR in terms of stroke, uh, paravalvular leak, vascular complications and bleeding. Uh, we know the issue of high degree heavy block requiring, requiring permanent, pa permanent pacing. What is the actual significance of paravalvular leak after TAVI? I'll, sh I'll show you some data about the valve durability of the percutaneous valves, and then I'll show you data from our own institute about contemporary surgical AVR in the era of TAVI, what happened in the last years in the, in, the, in the field of surgery. So if we look back at PARTNER, and this is the initial uh, uh, publication with one year follow-up, there was a disturbing observation about higher risk of stroke uh, when you use a transcatheter valve, and it was 8.3% in the, f in the arm of uh, TAVI, as compared to 4%, almost double, in, in, in surgical AVR, and if you look only at major stroke, and it was borderline, with borderline statistical significance, there was a, also a high risk of a stroke, which is 5%, compared to 2.4% in the surgical arm. But if you look at the same study, when, you, when, when the follow-up is up to three years, sorry about that, three years, you see there's a late catch-up of, of stroke in the surgical arm, <laughs> and after three years, it's actually uh, uh, the numbers are uh, the same, with no statistical significance between the two uh, treatment groups. So what about vascular complications in the same cohort A, uh, high-risk patients? You see that, uh, and as expected, in the transcatheter arm, there, any vascular complication was 18% as expected, and major complication was 11.3% as compared to very low numbers in the surgical uh, treatment uh, arm. So this should be expected when you perform transfemoral TAVI. This is a case of huge uh, uh, retroperitoneal bleeding which you have to control usually percutaneously during the procedure because surgery for this kind of uh, bleeding is not, uh, is not an option in these high-risk patients. But I have to remind you one thing, that the partner study is not relevant anymore. The partner study was performed with the old Edwards valve using the 22 to 24 French sheet, and there was no retroflex delivery system. So you should expect high rate of vascular complications, and you should expect high, ra high rate of stroke in, in the original partner study. So let's look at the more contemporary randomized data, and Ron already showed you the results. What about the US pivotal study comparing 18 French self-expanding core valve to surgical AVR, and you know you are very well, uh, uh, this study is very well known, and this is tremendous. You see the effect of mortality, and it is now up to two years, there was, there was a statistically significant lower mortality in the transcatheter arm, and let's look at the uh, stroke rate. So the stroke rate, and this is all stroke, it is a borderline uh, statistically with a significant trend of lower strokes in the arm of transcatheter valve. It's 8.8% it's, it's as compared to 12.6%. This is all stroke. And let's look at major stroke, also no statistically significant difference between surgery and transcatheter valve when you use a more flexible and uh, uh, less, uh, and the caliber is, is, is much reduced. When you combine mortality and major stroke, again, there was a statistically significant difference in favor of transcatheter aortic valve implantation. And if you look at any subgroup, and Ron showed you this data, any subgroup, you see that the trend is always in favor of TAVR. If you look at age, gender, BMI, a, a reduced ejection fraction or no, diabetes, prior cabbage, redo patients, PVD, hypertension, and also STS score, the, the, the confidence interval is always in favor of, the, of uh, TAVR. So another issue is 
paravalvular need, and we know this is a, 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 an issue that we have to deal with when we implant a transcatheter valve. And there are several mechanisms that were suggested in this very nice paper about the AR index after the procedure. You can uh, implant a valve in a heavily calcified uh, 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 valve, and, and you have this chunk of calcium al allowing, not allowing the, expand, the good expansion of the valve. You can implant the valve too high, or too low, or you may undersize the valve. In each case, you get paravalvular leak. Some of these can be repaired immediately after the procedure, and this can be hemodynamically assessed in the cat lab. Of course, you can use echo and, and, and auto, autography, but I, we, we always uh, assess the hemodynamics as well. So what are the rates of significant paravalvular leak in the cord B? And this is up to five years. You see that the moderate paravalvular leak is in, is in about 8.7%. This is up to one year. And you can see that there is a reduction of the rate, but this is actually not true numbers because the patients with paravalvular leak, they don't stay alive uh, up to five years. So, so be careful when you interpret these uh, numbers. But what is the significance of paravalvular leak? And this is very interesting. You see in the partner study, Moderate to severe AR did not influence the survival, which is very interesting. All-cause mortality. There was almost there was a trend or statistically significant uh, difference when you look at cardiovascular mortality comparing moderate to severe paravalvular leak to none or mild paravalvular leak. What about the more contemporary use of the uh, cover system? This is the extreme risk. U.S. pivotal study, you can see that the rate of moderate to severe is about 10% at discharge, and it stays like that after one month, but then there is a, slight, there is a small reduction of the rate of paravalvular leaks. And some of them, they do better uh, over time. And this is data from the randomized study, so with surgical AVR, AVR of course, it is not an issue. You should not have paravalvular leak when you send a patient to surgery, but with with, with TAVI using the COVAD, again, these are the rates of, the, of, of moderate to severe para, paravalvular leaks, as you can see here. And here you see it does affect uh, survival. And you see severe paravalvular leak is associated with 86% mortality rate up to two years. And you can see here that the majority of them, they die very early after six months. So you can assess, and we have to assess, during the procedure for residual paravalvular leak, and this can be assessed, as I said before, by direct autography or by echo, or hemodynamically, as you can see here, the AR index is below 25, and we should do all we can to correct paravalvular leak during the procedure, because after that, it's almost impossible to correct, and surgical options are, are there, there, are, there is a potential surgical option, but the patient, they don't do so well after surgery. So if you do a post-dilation of the valve immediately after the procedure, you can minimize the paravalvular leak and you can get excellent hemodynamics, which are acute. You see the hemodynamics uh, 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 improvement immediately when you, when you do post-dilation. What about the issue of permanent pacemaker and high degree AV block? We know the anatomy, we know the proximity of the conduction system with the LVOT where we land, especially the self-expanding valve, when we land uh, the valve. So these are the numbers. So I show you the number of, from the partner study. The partner study at two years, the rate of permanent pacemaker using the sapient valve was 7.2%, similar to the surgical AVR. So there's still a risk of permanent pacemaker after surgery. It's not only an issue of TAVI. What about the France registry, which is a combination of, the, of both valves? You see with the Sapien is 11% at one year, with Corval is 24%. And we look at the randomized study, the latest randomized study by Medtronic, with TAVI is 22% and surgical AVR is 11%, which is similar to, this, to the balloon expanding transcatheter Valve. Is it significant? Does it affect mortality? So this study from, Bern and from, Bern, from the Bern group of Stefan Windecker published two years ago, you see there is no impact on survival whether you implant or not a permanent pacemaker. Patient with no pacemaker, with prior pacemaker, 
or post-study implantation, there is no effect on one-year mortality. And I show you the most contemporary result by the France registry, which is all the next generation, the, the, the 18 French core valve and the 18 French, 16 to 18 French Edwards valves. This is a huge registry of more than 3,000 patients. And these are the numbers. What are the ratios of stroke, major stroke, you can see it's between 1.9% and 2.6%. So these are not the numbers that were shown in the partner study. And what about vascular complication, major vascular complication? Again, look at the numbers. 2.7% with Sapien, 4.5% with, with uh, Metronic, overall 4.7%. Uh, uh, what about valve durability? You can see this is from the US pivotal study at one year. The hemodynamics of the percutaneous valves are better than the surgical valve, and I think it's, it's, it's really easy to understand when you implant a valve without the need for, uh, to put uh, sutures, you, you can see in terms of the uh, valve area and uh, the mean gradient. And here we have data from the partner study up to five years now. We have excellent durability of the valve up to uh, uh, five years. So what is the contemporary outcome of surgical AVR in the, area of, in the era of TAVI? And when we, if we want to move to medium, medium risk patient, we have to match our outcome with TAVI to the contemporary surgical AVR data. And this is data from our own group, from, uh, from the Heart Center at Shiba Medical Center. When we compare two eras, up to 2008, when we introduced TAVI in an institution, and from 2008 to 2013, uh, in what we call the TAVI era, when, we, when most of the high risk, and I say most because in this, and Udi can, can show you the results, we still do high risk patients uh, with, with surgery. And these are the differences in based on characteristics of the patient. So in the pre-TAVI era, you see the rates of chronic obstructive lung disease, which was significantly reduced. 18% uh, of redo patients, now it's only 11%. The ejection, mean ejection fraction was 40%, now it's 45%, and the mean Euro score was 11% in the pre-TAVI area compared to 6.4% in the TAVI area. And these are the results. Uh, here in the blue line is the pre-TAVI area. You see the 30-day outcome and the one-year outcome, so mortality was reduced by half. It's, it, it is now 7.5% in the contemporary some high-risk patient, this is a tertiary center that take many, many high-risk, still many, many high-risk patients for surgical AVR. So the adjusted mortality was reduced by 54%. As you can see here, this is adjusted here for age and sex, but when you adjust to the risk of the patient, which is the Euroscore and other things, you see that we get borderline result in terms of reduced mortality. So the combination of stroke, low cardiac output, need for reopen, sternal infection, and tracheostomy. This is a combined uh, 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 comorbidities effect. You see that there was a reduction from 12.6% in the pre-TAVI area to only 6% in the TAVI era. And these are, these are the predictors of mortality, while in the period one, in the pre-TAVI area, there were some predictors like COPD, like uh, the Euroscore now, when most of the high-risk patients and most of the COPD patients, the severe COPD patients, are done by TAVI, you see that these are not risk factors any, anymore for surgical AVR. So I would like to conclude, ladies and gentlemen, by saying that TAVI is at least equivalent to surgical AVR in high-risk aortic stenosis patients in terms of survival. I think still PVL is the major limiting factor in TAVI and, I, and, and the next generation uh, percutaneous as well will deal with that. And in the second generation percutaneous valve stroke does not seem to be a major issue as compared to surgical AVR. Percutaneous valves are excellent, now up to five years in the, in the major study, excellent durability, and contemporary surgical AVR in the era of TAVI also shows excellent results. Thank you very much for your attention.